Okay, uh, Vincent, a uh, very warm welcome to the show. Um, for our uh, listeners, would you be so friendly to introduce yourself? Sure, Lodewijk. I'm a trend watcher. I basically love new technologies and uh, how they change the world. And that varies from uh, everything from, you know, started with uh, ICT, then I went to client server, then I went to internet, then I went to mobile, to big data, to artificial intelligence. And uh, five years ago, I stumbled onto uh, the cryptocurrencies, the bitcoins. And so I organized a conference in the, the blockchain uh, arena and also uh, with Bitcoin. So I like new technologies and I love to see how it has influence on the, on, on the world. Okay, thank you. Uh, what is blockchain? Yeah, well, blockchain is, an, um, is a wonderful new technology. I mean, blockchain goes back to 1995 when David Chown in Amsterdam or, or introduced DigiCash. And uh, he was a fantastic uh, guy. And he basically came up with a, me- with a method to make digital, uh, digital money. And that you didn't have a double spending problem, that people could send money back and forth on the, uh, on the internet without a third party. Uh, without a third party. So that was 1995 when it first uh, appeared. And it's a combination of cryptocurrencies and open source software. And when, um, then, then basically the cent- Dutch central bank killed it. And mm-hmm. all the central bank killed it. And of course the internet was not so uh, popular at that moment. And then in 2008, then we had, of course, the big banking crisis and uh, Goldman Sachs and I don't know, at least 50 percent uh, uh, the stock market went down and everybody thought, oh, this old, old system's going down. And then uh, this uh, Satoshi Nakamoto came up with this new, invol- new and improved mm-hmm. cryptocurrency idea, which was a decentralized uh, ledger with cryptocurrency, open source. And, uh, and nobody owns it. And wrote this paper in 2009. We got a new. Um, well, 2009 was the was the paper and uh, and the first uh, software. And now, of course, we have all this cryptocurrency. And the nicest thing is, it's it's a system which is decentralized. Everybody has a copy of the same information. It is now worth about 140 billion. And everybody tried to hack it, and that didn't work. So it's a system with built-in security. And also the openness, it's so open, everybody can hack it, but nobody uh, has been able to do that. So um, it, is a nice, uh, it is a nice open source system without third parties where people can transact. And they can transact money, they can transact contracts, they can, tra- can transact everything from value. And uh, at the moment we have about a thousand coins and all kinds of new uh, initiatives. And it's a new way to get all this... Um, to get uh, the, the trust in society organized. So, and we see it growing. Uh, it's still extremely small, but we see it growing uh, at a rapid rate. And on the field that uh, transparency, would you say that uh, transparency and the uh, way it works, especially that there's no government uh, oversight engaged in it, it makes it a good or a bad move for criminals to use their uh, money laundering operations? Yeah, well, crypt- the, the blockchain, uh, the, mm-hmm. It depends on which blockchain you choose. Um, if you take Monero, Monero, um, that is a uh, blockchain which is very, um, very, which is very anonymous. But the blockchain of Bitcoin is extremely open, extremely mm-hmm. open. So, <laughs> first criminals thought they were uh, totally protected, but it's you know it's it's if if somebody knows your public key, then all the mm-hmm. transactions can be checked. So it's really not a very fantastic system for criminals uh, to use. And they are going to other ones than Bitcoin. So, but okay. uh, I mean, criminals yep. are very smart, creative people. So they were one of the first to use it um, in, a, uh, in a more systematic way. And it's, of course, a fantastic way to send money all over the world very quickly with if the amount is a little bit more than uh, the, the costs are relatively um, um, mm-hmm. modest. But uh, I would say that the, the criminal activity in, on the blockchain um, of the, the, the Bitcoin blockchain, we mm-hmm. have about 350,000 transactions. It's a small minority. You know, it used to be that new techniques, uh, criminals and sex would start to use it. And, uh, and then the normal world takes over. And I think that happens the same with blockchain. It's actually... Um, if the if the, uh, the the old the, the old system the old banking system and the blockchain comes together, 
you know, on mm -hmm. all these exchanges. It's extremely regulated. There's an in incredible KYC project, uh, know your customer. If you want to buy Bitcoin everywhere all over the world, you have to identify yourself with passport, with your phone number, with your address, with your this, with your that. There's a huge amount of, um, there's a huge amount of, of, of checking. So in most, in a lot of countries, it's not so easy. Now you can, of course, go to all kinds of special places where uh, there are exchanges which are not so, uh, which are not checked so much. But I would say that the, the, uh, there, there are no special blockchains for criminals or who want to stay mm -hmm. anonymous. And um, I think that problem uh, is going away rapidly. So Bitcoin is not the go-to route for criminals, you say? No, well, you have two different things. You have Bitcoin and blockchain. And of course, you mm -hmm. have the Bitcoin blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain, and the Monaco blockchain. And there's now other blockchains which are much more secure and much more anonymous than the Bitcoin blockchain. Because... All the transactions are, you know, in the in the in the, in the ledger which everybody can track. If I send mm -hmm. you if I send you money, then you can just take my my the, you can see the number my Bitcoin uh, uh, public address. You type it in into blockchain.info. You see exactly with who I do business. And that is not a very anonymous system. So it's extremely open. That's really a good thing. I mean, it increases trust and increases capacity. And how big is? Uh the cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and blockchain, compared to other things like the dollar, the euro, the pound sterling, the RMB? Well, if we look at the coinmarketcap.com, I can now show you my screen. And mm -hmm. here's, my, here's my screen, as you can see that. Uh, at the moment, uh, the Bitcoin, uh, the Bitcoin, mm -hmm. every all the Bitcoins together are worth uh, about 65 billion. Ethereum is worth 29 billion, and Bitcoin Cash is 11 billion. So if you take those three together, they are about 100 billion. And the total mm -hmm. value of all the Bitcoins, all the 500 coins together, is 140. So the top three, the top three Bitcoins, the, the top three cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin and Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash are worth uh, 100, 100 and then totally 140. Now, if you want to compare that with the whole, um, you know, you're big, you have a big love of gold. Yes, and, uh, gold is good. <laughs> gold is good. Well, I never yeah. owned an ounce of my life, but um, the total uh, the value of gold is 7 trillion, 7,000 mm -hmm. billion. So um, it's cryptocurrencies are now worth 2% of gold. All the gold together is two swimming pools. So it's uh, it's also cryptocurrencies. If you want to have a billion dollar in gold or a billion dollar in cryptocurrency, one is a memory stick, and the other one is already a huge uh, it's already a huge amount. So a lot of so it's a lot more practical to take a cryptocurrency. If you then take all the amount of cash in the world, all the banknotes and all the coins and everything. That is uh, also about six trillion dollars, six thousand billion. If mm -hmm. you look at the digital gold, it's about a hundred trillion, so a hundred thousand billion. So it's it's two uh, percent times uh, divided by a hundred, so zero point zero zero two percent of the digital. Then we have all the debts. That's two. That's about um, two hundred trillion, and the derivative the derivatives is about six hundred billion, six hundred trillion, six hundred thousand billion dollars so cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. is at the moment 0.0000000001 percent of mm -hmm. all the money it's nothing it's absolutely it, totally nothing but it's a big thing in the media and in the world everyone talks about it people talk about it but it's, yeah. it doesn't mean anything you we ain't seen nothing yet it, it's also only you know just it started mm -hmm. in 2009 and, uh, and we're now talking about two, so it's eight years old. So it's extremely, uh, it's extremely young. And but it is going up quite a bit in value. I mean, because if you looked at, if you looked at uh, one year ago, the total value was maybe forty billion, and uh, and the year before it was four billion, and uh, it was so so it's going up rapidly, and um, and people are talking about it. And what you see is now much easier for a company for people who have money, who have that real money or the old money. And if they want mm -hmm. to buy cryptocurrencies, there's more and more exchanges coming and there's more and more regulation coming. So that also there's, there's funds coming, there's funds which invest in Bitcoins. 
so that people can buy shares in that fund, or they can have an, uh, they can just uh, buy um, buy with their with their normal money. They can buy shares in an, in a uh, mutual fund, mm -hmm. and then the amount of money which flows in is quite a bit. Every day we have about two billion euro of money flowing in and out, and there's more money there's more money flowing in than uh, money flowing out. That's why the that's why the exchange price goes up. That's why the price of Bitcoin goes up because a lot more money goes in than out. And where do you think that uh, Bitcoin and blockchain will be over, let's say, 10 or 15 years? Yeah, well, there's a couple of things. At the moment, it is an, uh, it's an investment or speculation, um, speculation mm -hmm. uh, hype. It, it, it used to be that it was used to transfer money internationally. I would say that's still happening from the 330,000 mm -hmm. transactions which are happening every day in Bitcoin and a little bit more in Ether. Uh, I would say that 90% at the moment is speculative. People buying and selling uh, mm -hmm. crypto because they, they want to make money out of, the, in, out of the investment or speculation. But also people are spending money. For example, I buy mining equipment. And I, if I want to buy mining equipment in China, mm -hmm. I just send bitcoins. And you know, in two seconds, uh, now in, in 10 minutes later, my payment is confirmed. It's a really a handy way to do international payments. Uh, remittance that people send money who work in certain countries mm -hmm. go somewhere else you can do that relatively cheap not if you send two dollars or five dollars but if you send two hundred dollars at the moment it takes it costs about two dollars to um, send an uh, send a payment all over the world now if you send five hundred dollars that is a very efficient way and within 15 minutes it arrives and And there's and, and in the ether there's all kinds of smart contracts where it works in the energy sector, especially also the ICO, the initial coin offerings, mm -hmm. where people make their own coin. So I would say that if you look in uh, 10 years, a couple of things need to happen. First, the amount of transactions need to go up. So both for Bitcoin and Ethereum, which are the two leading platforms, we need to go from Bitcoin can do about five or six transactions a second. Mm -hmm. Well, to give you an idea, Visa does 2,000 transactions a second, and, um, and, and, and that needs to go up a factor of 100 or 1,000, and there's all kinds of systems coming both for Ethereum and Bitcoin to make that uh, possible, and it needs to get more, in, 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 and if, that's, if that happens, that the transactions amount go up and that the transaction fees go down, I think we're going to use it more as an uh, international payment system. And uh, later, we can uh, use it as, an, uh, as, an, uh, as, a, as a general payment system. And I think that is still five years uh, away. But for international payment system, it is a very handy system. It can easily become from 140 billion to 1.4 trillion mm. to 14 trillion. I mean, if it, it can easily become 100 times bigger. And, uh, and then also people will get used to it and will start using it also to, to send money back and forth. Because it is, it is a much more modern way mm than the old banking system with all kinds of very complicated system. In a, in a normal bank, three people are doing the work, like they organize, mm -hmm. they have the computers up and running and they do hundreds of millions of transactions and a thousand people are testing if these people are doing their job right, if the trust, uh, to organize the trust. Trust, mm -hmm. is, in, trust, is, in, uh, trust is already uh, built into Bitcoin and Ethereum, all these blockchain systems so, so it's a lot um, it works a lot more modern so all the banks are also using blockchain experiments to see can we use that as the next level generation of uh, the next generation IT system to organize our payment systems with and what is in your opinion the biggest uh, negative side effect or the, and the biggest risk for blockchain and the Bitcoin as big as one well um, we can see that very well for example um, The Bitcoin, Bitcoin was, uh, you know, went up, uh, Bitcoin was unknown, so uh, it was very popular and everybody started to use it. Uh, it went to $1,000, $1,200, then China forbid it, not a couple of other central banks forbid it, went down to $250, then it went up to uh, $2,000. Then there was a quarrel in the, um, the software developers who created the Bitcoin and the miners. The miners are the ones who have all these uh, mm -hmm. distributed ledgers. And they had a big quarrel about how can we make the um, amount of transactions bigger in uh, Bitcoin. And then 
the whole system got stuck for about a year. They were discussing and nobody was agreeing. It is a, it is a um, permission. It is. A, I mean, the, the the people have to agree. The the community mm -hmm. of Bitcoin has to agree what kind of next steps they're going to take. That is a messy process. They can, it can easily break down, and then you have all kinds of groups who start their own Bitcoin. Like we mm -hmm. now have the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin Cash, and we have the Ethereum and the Ethereum Classic. Every time that the community doesn't agree. And it splits in two. Mm -hmm. You have two coins. Everybody suddenly ends up with two coins. And there's two communities. And they certainly they have the same name. And they go their own way. So that is, at the moment, highly unstable. Um, the governance system is, uh, is quite a problem. If you then look, for example, um, the Ethereum, you know, which is worth mm -hmm. $30 billion, That's now uh, based on a 23-year-old or 25-year-old Canadian guy who... Um, uh, um, Bufar, what's his name? Uh, Valerie, Valerie, um, um, it, um, what's his name? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Here we have him. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm still having, uh, I'm still having the, uh, yeah, Val V Vitalik Buterin, yeah, v Vitalik, yes. Vitalik uh, Buterin, and he's the one who's uh, he's the one who's um, um, who's the leader of Ethereum, and if he doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and there was a rumor that he was dead, that he was in a car accident, and uh, Ethereum went down with twenty percent. So it is a couple of people who uh, organize, uh, who are basically the the people behind that uh, behind the software of this program, and if. If they don't agree, then it can be a big mess. But that, of course, doesn't matter if Bitcoin goes down the drain, then Ethereum will take over. If Ethereum goes down the drain, Bitcoin Cash can take over. Or um, you have, for example, NEM, or you have NEO. You have all kinds of different platforms. Mm -hmm. So one platform can come and go, depending on how the governance is and how they can get all the techno technological challenges, uh, if they can meet them. But uh, in general, this kind of technology will be very popular. But the individual platforms can go down the train if there's a quarrel and everybody uh, basically gives up on it. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. That's him. That's him. Kevin, you bent eeuwig bedankt. Yeah, that was safety. You wou nog helemaal niet hebben.